Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakhak Badash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba in ha the sham name, Yahweh Shai, being the begotten Son, meaning He delivers, He saves. Rakhak Badash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders, Ramos and Ever Well. Peace and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom and above all, thank you again with another lesson through the spirit and power. Yahweh Bashem Shai, Lord Willing's lesson is edifying. So the title of this lesson, Lord Willing, is going to be the same God that gave me this can give me more. All right, and you know I got this title through inspiration of Yahweh Bashem Shai from this uh, lady that I met recently, whose name was Shirley. All right, and um, you know she had a very beautiful spirit. You know, what I mean, she was going through some things, but, you know, the Lord had it to where it set up where we crossed paths and, you know, we were chopping it up and she gave me a testimony of hers on, you know, how she was going through a situation and, you know, a man blessed her with some money and um, it was very spiritual how it all went down, you know, because, you know, she was praying to the Lord for help and the Lord put the spirit on this man to give her some money. And that man said to her, the same God that gave me this can give me more. And then he told her, if I'm not mistaken, to repeat that. You know what I'm saying? And then she told me what he said. So through the spirit, it boosted my spirit. And I was meditating. I'm like, man, that's so true, man. Because, you know, you might have certain times where you might not want to give away something because, you know, you want to hold on to it. But scripture speak about how it's more blessed to give than to receive, man. You know, how I said that. All right. And um, at the end of the day, call on line Bashar At the end of the day, whatever you give away, how Bashar Shai can give you that back and more. Okay. What does it tell you? And uh, let's get that scripture that I quoted first. Then Lord willing, we'll get Matthew 19. Lord willing. Acts 20 and 35, it says, I have shewed you all things, how that's so laboring, ye ought to support the weak, right? Meaning what? If you're laboring, if you got a job, all right, and you're making money, all right, you're supposed to show support to the weak, weak as in finances, because might can represent riches. So weak as in finances, all right, you support sincere brothers and sisters if you got it, okay? It says, and to remember the words of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's right. Okay. But the thing is, everything you give away, Yahweh Bashem Shai will give it back to you and more. All right. And, you know, I know I said we're going to get Matthew 19, but I got to get this first, Lord willing. This is Luke chapter 6, starting at verse um, 38. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. That's right. So what goes around comes around. You reap what you sow. So if you, you know, give to someone, all right, and the effort that you went through to give to that person in sincerity and in righteousness, that same effort is going to be dished out back to you and vice versa. If you shit it on somebody, you're going to get shit it on. All right. And how I spoke about that in Matthew 25. He said, you know, uh, when I was hungered, you fed me. You gave me meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Naked, you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. Right. And then in prison, you know, and you visited me. Right. Roughly paraphrasing. And they said to you, I was Well, what, what, Lord, when did we do these things to you? He said, what you did unto the least of these, my brethren, you did so unto me. So what you do unto the flock? Is what you're doing to your how about shy? So you got to know how you treat the flock. And if you give to the flock, that's basically like you giving to the Lord. All right. Proverbs 19 and 17. He that hath pity on the poor. He that hath pity upon the poor. Lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given. Will he pay him again? Right. Meaning what? The Lord's going to recompense you. All right. He's going to give you what you gave away ultimately. All right, but it's going to be in righteousness. You know, this is Matthew chapter 19. And I'm going to start at verse 27, Lord willing. Then answered Peter. 
and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So Peter said, Lord, we gave up everything and followed you, right? What are we going to get in return, right? Verse 28, And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or, wife, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That's right. So, Yahweh was telling them, this is what you're going to get in return. You're going to sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You're going to be a leader in the kingdom of heaven, which is perpetual. All right? Here it is. You got leaders over here on earth, and they get canceled. Like Donald Trump, he's supposed to be, supposed to be a leader for Babylon. Well, they're canceling him from being president again. <laughs> All right, but in the kingdom of heaven, Lord willing, we be able to elect number of the 144,000, the governing ruling body. You know, Lord willing, we, we, nobody ever is going to take our seat. We're going to constantly be sitting on the throne judging under Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, every man in his own particular order. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, every man in his own order, Mashiach, the first fruits, then they which are Mashiachs at his coming, roughly paraphrasing, which is the elect. All right, there's levels to this, man. But it says, you know, if you've forsaken houses, you've forsaken brethren, you forsake your sisters, father, mother, wife, children, lands, for the sake of Yahweh Bashmashai, for the namesake Yahweh Bashmashai, you're going to get it all back a hundredfold, man. Okay? So everything you gave up on this side, you're going to get it back a hundredfold. Going back to the title of this lesson, the same God that gave, gave me this can give me more. It's the same God that can give me more, man. All right? This is uh, 2 Chronicles 25 and 9. When you read this story in context, Amaziah, he hired some soldiers out of the northern kingdom and he was going to give them money. But the Lord told them that they couldn't fight with him. So Amaziah was like, man, what about the money that I gave them, though? Right. 2 Chronicles 25 and 9. And Amaziah said to the man of the Most High, but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? In this particular scripture is referring to the northern kingdom when it says army of Israel. All right, because you had Israel and you had Judah. Judah represents the southern kingdom. Israel represents the northern kingdom in certain scriptures. Even though we are all Israelites, you know, but the Lord did split the kingdoms for a period of time. But now the kingdoms are coming back together under the house of David through this truth. You know, and even though you do see Jake and the world uh, link up together, it'd be northern and southern kingdom linking up together in the world. But, you know, we are divided as a nation. You know what I'm saying? But in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be at one again. The scriptures say there shall be no more two nations. All right? Because we're not going to be separate anymore. We're not going to look at each other funny. We're not going to, you know, uh, try to single each other out. You know, you're northern kingdom, I'm southern kingdom. All that's going to be done away with in the kingdom of heaven. You know, we're just going to be looking at each other like brothers and sisters. You know, as we should be right now. But we get it. We're under the curses, you know. But the point is... That's going to be done away with, right? But in this period of time, this is around the time when it first started to begin. So this is Second Chronicles 25 and 9. And Amaziah said to the man of the Most High, But well, what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of the Most High answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. That's right. Okay? So the Lord is able to give us much more than what we are give away. The scriptures speak about in Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, how uh, riches and poverty are of the Lord, man. Okay. It's Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 11. There is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste and is so much the more behind. Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help. Wanting ability, meaning lacking ability, incompetence, right? And full of poverty, meaning they have no money. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good and set him up from his low estate. And that's exactly what the Lord can do. He can take you from being broke and raise you up literally within a second. All right. That's why I should say, you know, fret not because of evildoers. Be not envious of the workers of iniquity. Roughly paraphrasing because, yeah, they make a lot of money. But them niggas is wicked. What do they do to make that money? 
they had to bend over, they had to sacrifice loved ones, you know, so on and so forth, man. Yeah, they got a couple million dollars, but what did they do to get that, man? We have to hold firm our integrity and walk in righteousness in the fear of the Lord, all right? And, you know, Lord willing, in due season, the Lord will raise us up from this lowest state. But we have to wait upon Yahweh Shem We can't just try to jump the gun and sell out to Esau because you don't have any patience, man. Now you're doing wickedness to obtain riches, man. That's off, man, all right? And they know it's off. That's why I should say they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah, them niggas got money, but they're depressed. And a lot of them niggas who got money be the same ones saying they wish they was broke again, man. They said they wish that they never became famous, man. Going to show you that money cannot fill the void that your soul needs, that fulfillment in, man. Even that nigga J. Cole said it. He said uh, basically about how making money won't erase the pain, man. In that song, Middle Child. All right? So, that's how you know, man. All right? Money is a defense. But wisdom is greater than than, than, in all, than in all of it, man. You know, and if you don't have the wisdom of Yahweh, you will be nothing regarded, as it says in Wisdom Solomon 9 and 6. All right, I'm not saying money doesn't matter, but at the end of the day, in comparison to what really matters, which is this truth, serving Yahweh Shemashai, money doesn't matter. All right, and we're gonna see that when all hell breaks loose, because what's gonna happen when money, when the economy collapses, and there will be no more such thing as the U.S. dollar? Then what? You know, what do you? Who, who, who are you then? The Lord is still gonna be there, <laughs> you know, but. The economy is going to collapse. So then what? That's why you can't put your trust in these corruptible riches, man. Scripture speak about how riches do gather wings, you know, and they fly away, man. All right. So we put our trust in Yahweh Shah. We don't put our trust in these earthly ass carnal possessions, man. You know, and I know that, you know, the way society is set up right now, you need to make you need to make money. Scripture say if you don't work, you don't eat. But this is only temporarily. This is not our rest. All right. It's Ecclesiastes 11 and 13. It says, and lifted up his head. I'm going to read 12 again. Ecclesiastes 11 and 12. Again, there is another that is slow and hath need of help, wanting ability and full of poverty. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good and set him up from his low estate and lifted up his head from misery so that many that saw from him is peace over all the prosperity. It's supposed to be peace over all the earth, if I'm not mistaken. Ecclesiastes 11 and 14. Prosperity and adversity, life and death. Poverty and riches come of the Lord. Okay, so it's of the Lord whether you grow impoverished or you know you uh, are rich. Call him Bashim Asha. All right. This is uh, Deuteronomy eight and seventeen. And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. Verse eighteen. But thou shalt remember the Lord, Yahweh Bashamel Shai, thy power. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. So it's of the Lord while we're able to get wealth, man. As it also says in John 3 and 27, and I might close out with this, if the spirit permits. John 3 and 27, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven, man. That's right. So it's of Yahweh Bashamashai's will why we received anything, man. The same God that gave me this can give me more, you know. So with that being said, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Chakradash, the honor to the apostles of this great most and every well, peace and blessings to the elected nation of Israel. That means we'll say Shalom and Baba Kwame